I'm 30 years old. I was diagnosed, I want to say, officially diagnosed, maybe around age six. Um, I was born in West Africa. Um, my parents and my parents had me in West Africa, uh, specifically Liberia. Um, my mom's from Liberia, my dad's from Sierra Leone. So when I was born, I kept getting sick and we weren't the wealthiest of people. Um, you know, uh, growing up was a little, was tough. So when I was born and my early years, I kept getting sick. Um, my legs, my arms would like swell up. I would be in constant pain. I would crying constantly. Um, and during that time, my parents didn't really have much money and didn't really know what was going on with me. Um, they had no idea what sickle cell was. Um, so I just kept struggling with not knowing and they just kept trying whatever they can, any means that they can, whether it's like natural remedies or anything like that they can put together or anything at all to try to get me to be comfortable. Um, and then finally, I think my dad will tell me the story where um, I think I went to the hospital and this like American doctor that was traveling there like see me and he kind of like suggested that I may have something called sickle cell um, but again that wasn't like my official diagnosis um, and then years later when I ended up coming back coming here to America um, that's when I was introduced to the Tomorrow Fund Clinic and I started getting care there, treatments there, and I was officially diagnosed, and that's when things started um, moving along. So sickle cell is a blood disorder um, where you inherit it. So both of my parents have the, the trait, um, and I have five siblings, so out of five of us, myself and my younger brother, both have um, the disease. I have the disease um, SS, which is the most, which is the most, um, I guess, serious type version of the um, disease. And what sickle cell is, is whereas, I guess, regular normal people, their blood cells are more round, and they're more vibrant red and more like they pass through, you know, the bloodstream very easily and they do what it needs to do versus someone like me where my blood cells are more crescent shape. So, and they're not as vibrant red, they're kind of like very dull red and um, they struggle to pass through the blood streams. So when it passes through the blood streams, it gets stuck. And when it gets stuck, it kind of shuts out oxygen from being able to get delivered throughout the body. And when that happens, it causes something called a uh, crisis, which is um, what we say in like sickle cell community. A sickle cell crisis is um, pretty much like, it's like really, really, really bad pain that occurs in the, in the bones of your body. It's, it's excruciating pain. Um, it can happen in the back, in the legs, wherever, um, wherever like your blood cells are kind of stuck, um, and and that can also lead to complications, um, such as organ failure or stroke, things like that. Um, so I typically need blood every three to four weeks. Um, I literally just came from um, a blood trans transfusion before this. Um, you can see the medical bracelet. Um, so I need blood regularly. Um, so it's something that I depend on at this age in my life where it's been really keeping me stable. Um, because of it, my blood count has been at a number where it's really good and it's causing me to not need to not go into crisis and it's causing me to not be hospitalized. And this has been going on for like a few years now where I've been 
doing pretty well. So I would say meeting blood is, has been a huge part of, you know, the point, the progression in my health. It's, it's been the biggest um, reason for my um, health being at this point where I feel like things are stable and I'm in a good place and I've been doing pretty well. So, yeah. It's, it's not just a simple um, act. It's an act of service. It's an act of selflessness because you've taken time out of your day and you've gone in and you've gone through this process of, you know, getting poked by a needle. And it's not the most pleasant thing, but because of because you did that and because you, you know, um, donated, you are literally saving my life and other people's lives. Um, you're making it possible for me to continue to chase my dreams and continue to um, just continue to live the life that I want to live. Because of you, I am literally living and I'm literally doing the things that I want to do. And it's all because of this one act of kindness that you decided to do. So thank you.